Hello, and welcome back to the Investors of Gaming Channel. I'm Ambassador Michael, and today I have some things I would like to discuss with you, specifically about memory, console memory, and a brief overview of it, where we're at, and where we should go from here. So the PS5, specifically, is the center of topic here. It has a unique SSD. It was custom built by PlayStation, specifically for the PlayStation 5, and how it works with the other components of the system. In theory, a pretty good idea. Specific hardware fitting together usually is a pretty decent idea as long as it doesn't hold consumers back. Think Apple and their lightning cables, when everyone else kind of uses USB-C and it's pretty much universal at this point. So with the PS5 and its SSD, it hasn't been extremely abnormal that we needed to buy storage peripherals. From the N64 and PlayStation 1 all the way until now, we've been buying storage. First to save data and now to save our games too. When we transitioned into the PS3 and 360 era, we started saving games to hard drives, and that massively increased the file sizes we needed and used. We went from having to use megabytes to gigabytes, and to put that in context for those who don't know, or maybe you're not thinking about it quite often, a gig is 1024 megabytes. So a game that is 30 gigs, now a pretty conservative number would be about 30,720 megabytes compared to the 5.3 megabytes we might use for save data in the current generation, previous generation. So how did we solve this issue? We simply got bigger hard drives. We made the space bigger. The PS3 and the 360 came up with relatively small hard drives, um, the maximum being 160 gigs at launch for the PS3, and the 360 didn't even come with an internal drive at launch. At the end of the generation, Xbox had proprietary drives for the 360S coming with 4GB or 250 gigabytes, while the PS3 came with up to 500 gigs of internal storage. It's important to note that until the Xbox One and PS4 generations, we didn't need to install games. It was solely an option to decrease load times. Running from an HDD is faster than using a laser disk drive. The PS3 was compatible with many HDDs on the market and could be fairly easily replaced, more or less screwing one screw on the back and sliding it out, replacing it, screwing it back in. The 360 had two different models with hard drives, the S using proprietary and the white 360 having just a hard disk drive and a plastic shell. Now more or less the S is the same way. Either way, Xbox's way of handling this generation of storage was not the most consumer friendly. Moving into the Xbox One and PS4 generation, we were finally able to just plug in external HDDs to expand our storage without having to worry too much about compatibility. While replacing the internal storage of the systems was a pain, it wasn't impossible, and it was a bit cheaper than getting an external. However, most people could easily go with many options of an external drive that were available in many sizes and prices. So we had options for things that made it significantly easier. Though the system storage on these systems was usually fairly low, 500 gigabytes and one terabyte options were really the only ones offered throughout the generation. There was the two terabyte special edition 500 million sold PS4, but it's so limited that uh, I'm not really gonna count it here. And then we moved into the current generation that we have now, the PS5 and the Xbox Series generation. And we've pretty much moved exclusively to SSDs. While SSDs have been around for years, they're still on the pricey side for tech, and they can be a bit of a pain to install. External SSDs aren't really an option for many people, and they don't really work with these systems. As of writing and recording this, neither system allows you to play current generation games off an external drive, the one exception being the memory, gate, memory card storage that Seagate's made for the Xbox Series consoles. Um, and seemingly any that will work on the Xbox Series will likely be in that style in the future. Uh, according to PlayStation's website, the PS5 as of now doesn't have the option to play PS5 games off of external drives, even if those drives were to meet the requirements set up by Sony. The PS5 seems to be capable of playing PS5 games only off of internal storage. So now we have this strange dynamic with Xbox requiring proprietary drives that can be quite expensive. Not on sale, the Seagate drive costs around $219, 220 the PS5 has to have internal storage installed, which requires making taking the system a little bit apart and accessing the motherboard to insert the SSD. It's not insanely complicated, but it's not as easy as just plugging in a memory card. However, it, it is a bit overstated how complicated it is. It's you pop off the shell, you unscrew it, and that's more or less it. Uh, in addition to the SSD being inserted directly to the motherboard. The PS5 requires a very specific set of requirements that, even if they are met, may not work with the PS5. So, 
for the sake of conversation, I'm going to list off the requirements here for the PS5 SSDs. So that's a whole lot of information. At the time of writing and recording, there seemed to be only two available SSDs that work with the internal memory of the PS5, Seagate's Firecuda 530 NVMe, though there are two models, one with a heatsink and one without. You will need the one with the heatsink for it to work with the PS5. The second is the WD Black SN850, also offered with and without a heatsink. Now you can add the heatsink for those who want to save a few bucks, uh, though I'm not sure how much adding a heatsink is or how difficult. The thing that I have heard from many about the PS5 and its handling of expanding storage is that it is good that Sony is allowing us to choose what we want to use for the system and have options, which could lead us to having cheaper options than on Xbox. However, it seems that this only applies if we're accounting for the fact that you can buy lower storage models. The prices for the Fire Cuda 530 and the WD Black SN850 500GB models are $159.99 and $169.99 respectively. Comparing them directly with the 1TB options and the Xbox Seagate expansion, the Fire Cuda 530 is $259.99, WD Black SN850 is $249.99, and as stated above, on Xbox's website, the Seagate Custom SSD is $219.99. So ultimately, yes, if you want to expand your storage with 500 gigs, you'll save some money, and it would expand your storage by double. But it seems to me that the PlayStation's approach is a little more complicated for very little benefit at the current time. In addition to all of this, we have to wait for manufacturers, websites, or users to build a list of compatible SSDs. Something that I feel PlayStation should have put more effort into testing build and building a database of. Overall, if it isn't a big deal for you to open up your PS5 and install an SSD, and you're fine with the testing that you will need to do and or wait for, then it's up to you. But given the limited options that come along with the price, it feels like there could have been better solutions for both Sony and Xbox to have landed on. So overall, I think that we will get better designs with future redesigns, along with hopefully external support that will make our lives easier. But as things stand, it seems that the companies have wildly different approaches to how we can manage our storage. So thank you very much for spending your time with me. I want to hear what you think about storage in the current state. Uh, if you do agree, disagree, and then, of course, any way you want to interact with the video would be much appreciated. Subscribing is always appreciated. Liking and disliking, even. Comments. It's all the same to YouTube. YouTube doesn't really care as long as you're interacting with the content. So, any way you want to do so would be greatly appreciated. And I will see you all in the next one.